Hey guys, welcome to Mrs. G's Sewing Space. I appreciate you joining me today, especially since it's been such a long time since I put a video out. My mojo is finally coming back to me, so I have a few more videos that will be coming down the pike. For this video, we are going to make a marine vinyl boxed bag. So that's what the blue fabric is. It's a marine vinyl, it's thick, it's a faux, plast uh, faux leather, and you get the material. I found my material in Joann's in the upholstery section. I'm sure there are places online where you can purchase it, but I don't know where. I was trying to use up scraps so I can go out and buy more. Anyways, I'm using this one as a, as a little art kit. I had embroidered a little face onto it. The face for this one came from Blastio Stitch. Um, like I said, art supplies. So I have my gouache and my watercolor book and my pens, my paint pens. No, they're not paint pens. They're, um, well, uh, brush markers to have in there. Um, so I really like this particular little boxed bag because it fits everything that I need. All I have to do is add some brushes to it and I'll be good to go wherever. So let's go down to the making of the bag. So what you need is marine vinyl, your choice of color, and whatever color zipper that you want. And as you can see here, I also machine embroidered this whatever on here so that um, I would just have something cool on my bag. And I believe this one came from either Urban Threads or Embroidery Library. I'm going to have to go back and look. When I find it, I'll put the link down below for those who, who machine embroider. So in order to prepare the bag, you need two squares of marine vinyl. So this one is 11 and a half by 11 and 3 quarters. So I have two squares that are 11 and a half by 11 and 3 quarters. As you can see, as I'm lining it up, it doesn't fit. I have to rotate it so that it fits properly. And when you see in the middle, you see two arrows at that middle cut line that says zip. So that's where I'm going to put my zipper at. So I swapped out my standard zigzag foot for my zipper foot. And I was having a hard time getting that zipper sewed in because marine vinyl tends to stick to itself and it sticks to metal. So anytime you're sewing on top of marine vinyl, you need to put a layer of magic, Scott's magic tape with the matte finish, the opaque tape that comes off easily. You just take a piece of tape and you put it on the bottom of your zipper foot and then that tape will help glide over the vinyl so that it's easier to sew on. So the vinyl doesn't stick to that tape for some reason, it just slides right over it. Which is why I got those funky little um, waves where my zipper is because the fabric stretched and I didn't, I didn't do anything to make it stiff to keep it from, from stretching. So at this point it's now time to put right sides together and lining up the edges as best you can. Once you put the zipper in, that piece with the zipper in it, the top piece, is gonna be slightly larger than your bottom piece, and that's okay. Make sure, make sure, make sure you open your zipper, because that's the only hole you have to flip everything inside out. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and take my time, and I'm going to, this this foot that I have also has magic tape on the bottom so that it glides easier over the marine vinyl and just sew my seams going all the way around the marine vinyl so that I can enclose all four seams. Okay, so now I have all four seams sewn up, and right here as I was getting ready to flip everything inside out, I realized I did not have tabs. Now, for this particular bag, I added two white tabs to match my marine vinyl, because those tabs are what you hold on to to zip and unzip your bag. 
on the blue bag that I showed earlier, I did not put the tabs in. So you actually have to grip the bag itself in order to zip and unzip. And if you're okay with that, that's cool. Then you don't have to put the tabs on. But I have just popped open my seams right there where my zipper was because that's where I'm putting my tabs at. So I'm going to cut a thin strip, probably about uh, two inches long. And I'm gonna cut two of them so that I can fold it in half and slip the loop to the inside and the cut edges to the outside and sew it up so that I will have tabs to be able to hold on to when I want to zip and unzip my bag. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to make sure my stitching is secure by sewing it over three times. So I would go over it once, reverse stitch, back over the zipper, and then forward stitch over it again. But I would also make sure that I lined up my seam lines so everything matches when you flip it out. And there you go, you can see the tabs on the inside where I, I slipped, slipped, slipped them in. And they are right there by my zipper where I need them to be. Okay, now that I've got all that done, it's time to box the corners. So boxing the corners, what I'm doing, remember, I've got to work with this marine vinyl because it sticks to itself. So I need to make sure that my seam lines are matched up on the inside. And then I'm marking three inches so that I will have a box of three inches. I'm drawing the line and I'm putting my clips on because you don't want to poke holes in here until it's time to sew. Holes are when you're working with marine vinyl, it's like similar to leather, whereas when you put a hole in there, it's permanent. You can't take it out. So that's why I'm using the clips. And I'm using my marking pen, or it's just a regular ballpoint pen, to mark the line that I'm going to sew on so that everything stays straight. Okay, so there's all four corners done, clipped and marked. And so I'm going to sew on the line that I made with my ballpoint pen. I'm going to reverse stitch at the beginning and reverse stitch at the end so that I can have a secure seam until all four corners are done. Okay, now all four corners have been sewn. We're going to trim our threads and I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch seam allowance off of these corners. So I'm just trimming off that excess and now it's time to flip everything inside out. And just make sure you push everything through so that the corners are nice and pointy. Well, pointy as in, you know, the corners are, are pushed out all the way through. And if you need to use your uh, little stick dowel or a chopstick or something like that, go ahead and use it. Just be careful not to push too hard. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for this teeny weeny little video. I do have more videos coming down the pike. And always remember to hit that subscribe button, like my videos, and share them if you can possibly can. And uh, clicking on the links down below in my description box are all ways to help support my channel. So I appreciate it, and I hope you're doing well.